This is RadioOnFire.com, home of the His and Hers Show, with talk from a male and female point of view. Now, here are your hosts, Diamond K and Mrs. Sweet T. RadioOnFire.com, yours truly, Diamond K, in here with the very lovely... Mrs. Sweet T. How you doing, Sweet T? I'm awesome. We also have another guest in the building. I'm going to let him introduce himself. <laughs> What's up, yo? It's your boy, Nucky Johnson. Nucky Johnson in the building. Um, definitely glad that uh, you could come through the uh, Radio on Fire headquarters and chop it up with us. Are you already? So, um, we, I guess let's start in the beginning. Where where are you from? Park Heights, Baltimore. What's up? Okay. Now, for our listeners um, outside of Baltimore, how, how, T, how would you describe Park Heights? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? You ready? What? Um, yeah. So, so Park Heights. Be ready is, at all times. Be ready at all times. <laughs> Park Heights. Um, I, I'm trying to think. Do a lot of rappers come out of Park Heights that we know of? I mean, I don't say a lot, but enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what, what, like, what are your early memories of uh, hip hop? Niggas with attitude, straight out of Compton. That was my first jam. I had that joint on a cassette tape. I found it in my father's truck, and just been. I hate it because my mother ain't played that. You feel me? <laughs> but I, used to, um, I literally rock my tape until it pop. You know what I mean? Literally. So that was my first joint for real. Yeah, and, and so um, who else? Who who else do you listen to? What did you listen to early on? I really didn't listen to music. I was too busy running the streets doing dumb stuff. I really wasn't into music until like I was probably like fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. And then, um, the. Fr- <laughs> the first CD I ever bought was like Mystical Unpredictable, and everybody clowned me for it. <laughs> <laughs> now that was the was that the one where he had the the the, the puzzle, puzzle piece? piece? Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yo, I was a I Mystical that. fan, yo. Wait, like, no, he was he was I rocking. Mean, I mean, but like you know, back then it was all about Wu Tang and all that. So like, I mean, that was my first CD I ever purchased. But like, the first artist I really became a fan fan of, like Die Hard, was DMX. Okay. okay. So we're talking late late nineties uh era. Right. So so you you were a fan of the Rough Riders movement? Most definitely. So um Eve, did did Eve get as big as she could No. Yeah, I, no. I think something. I something felt like happened they made there. her go too commercial. Mm. Like like Shorty really had a hold on the game as far as being raw, because the only people that was raw like that was her and Kim. You feel me? Yeah. And like Kim was more on the sexy raw side. Eve was more like a pit bull in the skirt for real. Yeah. So like when they made her go commercial with that, um, what these games they want, da 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 da, da all that shit, they kind of like messed her up with the hood for real. And then I guess because she wasn't putting on no butt, they shelved her. <laughs> <laughs> that might be unless it was Stevie J, because he got Sleazy. it. But uh, <laughs> but that was back in her stripper days. Yeah, right? you yeah, feel me? yeah. You know when you on that pole, a pole is a pole. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? The uh, uh, so so how did you make that transition um from you know, around the way, whatever was happening in the streets to to music. I just really made it, honestly. Like, when I met Bridget, for real, because my plan for the rap game was totally different. Like, I was going to come in here and just beef with everybody. But, uh, <laughs> like 50 Cent style. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't even say 50 Cent. I was a 50 Cent fan, but, like, just on, like, y'all niggas whack. I'm going to come in here and shut it down, yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't know, just test niggas metal, for real. Like, is this what you really do? You know what I mean? But I found that... Controversy is good when you're making millions of dollars, but it's bad when you're local. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, I mean, Bridget showed me how to do things a different type of way. So, me and her sat down and talked. Who's Bridget? Bridget Johnson, Eyes on Me Entertainment. Okay. So, she showed me it's a different way, you know what I'm saying? Like, the whole bees with honey type thing, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I came in here and she showed me the other side of business, the paperwork and BMI, all that stuff. And showed me that it was more taught than just dropping a couple mixtapes and waiting to get signed. So that, um, with you know, with you saying that from from what you saw as far as Baltimore artists prior to you doing doing your thing, did you think that they were going about it the right way? Did you think it was going the wrong way? Like what what what, what was your perception? Um, I'm a, I'm an honest individual, so I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. But I didn't know it was any Baltimore artists before I started rapping. Okay, and like I honestly see why now. Because by me being in it, every show, everybody Facebook, everybody Instagram, everybody Twitter, they all promote the other rappers. When you sell tickets for events, 
they sell them tickets to other rappers. So it's, a, it's like almost like a culture, a subculture, or a sub is like it like exists beneath the surface of the city. Mm-hmm. Like I do things like I walk up to people and be like, "Yo, name five Baltimore rappers." They can name D Boy sometimes. They always name Smash and they always name Caddy. They can't do five. Every now and then you hit test me, but it, it's three is the max. It'll be a different three sometimes. Tim Trees. Everybody say Tim Trees. Don't nobody say his name. They don't say his No, I'm real talk. About Tim Trees. But I'm trying to tell you, like, Baltimore, Baltimore hip hop has not resonated into the community the way it should have. He's absolutely right. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Now, now, if, if we go deeper with that, why is that? Well, honestly, because, like, a lot of people don't want to bang with you until you made it for real. Like, we are a very um, media based town. Like, we're a bandwagon town as far as, like, when it comes to everything except for maybe sports. Like, we stick by our O's and we stick by our Ravens. You know what I mean? But when it comes to, if you drop something right now and you never dropped nothing before, mm. Niggas in your hood like, oh, you rapping now? Are oh, you trying to be a rapper? It's what you're trying to be. It's what you think you're going to be as opposed to my nigga rap. You feel me? Right. And then it's always that, right. well, my cousin better than him. Well, I'm better than him. <laughs> That's you know true. <laughs> That's definitely it's, it's, true. It's always, it's always like that. You know what I'm saying? I had a little bit of a different age on things because I'm the president of a motorcycle club. So I had my own lane, my own network. You feel me? So when I came out, I asked them to support me, and they did. So that's why my videos do what they do. That's why I'm able to do what I can do because I can go to any state and still pull out 30 people because of my bike relationships. That's that's interesting. So um, the I guess so when you started with the world in the bike world, right? Had you already started in the rap world? No, my pops was the president of a motorcycle club. My mom was the vice president of her club. I got two uncles that's one, one percenters. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up around this. I had colors before I could walk. A wow. motor baby. You know it. You, it's a motorcycle what you, baby. What you know about that? No, I'm just <laughs> saying. Like, it's, I like I like that. Like, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so did you did you get resistance from the, the motorcycle community when you started uh, I didn't, hip-hop? I didn't get resistance, but... Um, my reputation is Nutty Johnson, and my reputation as my name in the bike world are two completely. One is PC and one isn't. You know what I'm saying? So I have a reputation for being very brutally honest and an asshole in the bike world. So what does Nucky Johnson mean? Where did you get Nucky Johnson from? Long story short, my uncle in the mafia movies. You know what I'm saying? So everybody used to call me Nucky because I had long braids and I used to box. Okay. So he started calling me Nucky. By the way, I, I used to kind of run my little crew around the, way, around the way or whatever. You know about the whole Atlantic City thing. Sure. Well, the name died off. I wanted to come back and do something innovative with a, a hip-hop name, like a pseudonym. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want to bring anything from the streets and with me. And that was the only nickname I ever grew up with that I never did no ratchetness under. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to be at the show. And just because you change your life don't mean people forgive you for things you did before. So you want to be at a show and somebody be like, yo, that, that's that nigga right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like he gained a little weight and grew some facial hair, but that's the same nigga. You know what I mean? Then the next thing I know, I'll come outside and I got some stuff waiting outside for me. You feel me? Because yeah. all you got to do is Google rap to find out where you going to be at. That's true. If that's you true. really rap. If you really rap. If, <laughs> <laughs> if you really rap. So like it's just stuck that way. So I made it an acronym. You feel me? So that's how it came about. So... um the the acronym you want you want to separate the streets from your raps, but your raps are very street. Right. I got I still gotta be true to who I am. Yeah. But I don't name dates, I don't name times, I don't name places and things like that. You know what I'm saying? I still gotta be true to who I am. I'm worried I'm not worried about my inner circle knowing my stuff because they know most of my stuff anyway. But like anybody on the outside looking in, you gonna have to do a lot of puzzle piecing to figure out what I'm talking about or what incident I'm talking about, you feel me? I got six addresses and I don't live at none of them. So you went and do some homework. (laughs) Uh, Now, you're somebody who gets out of the town a lot and does some some things out of town. Have you noticed, you know, is it different out of town than in Baltimore to you? Definitely, because they don't know you. They only see, they only know what they see. And like I was telling, I had a Jay Jackson interview down when I was down in Atlanta. Project what you want to be. You know what I mean? Like, nobody's going to ask a stock clerk to be a manager 
they want to act the stock clerk that's projecting management skills to be the manager. You feel me? You carry yourself like a manager, you get promoted to such. So when I do things like my flyers, my videos, everything I try to do on a top scale of my pockets can handle. You know what I'm saying? So I try to look as industry as possible, as, as possible, so that way when people who don't know me, it intrigues their mind to want to be like, who is Nucky Johnson? Where he coming from? You know what I'm saying? So here, if I do it, they're like, oh, he's trying to shit on niggas. He's just pulling up in a limo. Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? But if I do that shit down the land, they're like, oh, shit, can I get a picture? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, I done right. had people stop me. Like, I do a show. I had people. We did a show in Miami. I had a girl try to follow me to my hotel. You feel me? We did a show down um, Fayetteville, North Carolina. They loved it. Asked me to come back. They rebooked me. The next day, I see somebody in a um, gas station that was at the show. The Instagram autographs, all of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Up here in Baltimore, it's kind of like, oh, yo, that's knocking and keep walking. <laughs> right, right. That's true. Ain't right. That's, I, that's, I, that's yeah. true. It's no support here. It's terrible. I, I'm not going to say there's no support. You just, you just got to motivate them. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to give them a reason to support you. Well, this is, this is definitely a show... Show me first town. Yes. Uh, you know what I mean? So, right. You got to yeah. show me first before I'll support you. And it shouldn't be like that. And they got to see somebody else like you. Then yeah. they'll like you. Yeah. They ain't going to be yeah. the first one. Mm-hmm. I right, can't be right, the first right. fan. Right. <laughs> I can't be the first fan. Um, so going out of town, that, that's good. What like What is the plan? What is, what, is your, what, what is your motivation for music? Or is this just a vehicle to get somewhere else? Well, I mean, everything is a vehicle to get somewhere else. You never limit yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if this going to put me in Steven Spielberg face and he want me to do a movie, I ain't going to say, no, nah, I'm a rapper. You feel me? Some so, people might. Man, Some people shit, might. you crazy in your mind. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I'm a hustler first. You feel me? Whether it's legal, illegal, whatever, I'm a hustler. If I can see a good come up and a good reward, I'm going to do it. As long as it ain't hurt nobody or going to get my moral compass. So, I mean, when I started this, I just wanted to see these bump my car. But, like... It caught everybody liked it, and some people convinced me into taking it serious. So once I started taking it serious, it started getting legs. Like when I did Park Heights, like all down bottom just went crazy. You know what I mean? So it just kind of took from there. So now I'm just using it as I do want to get to like a Ti level, a Jeezy level. I do want to get to the level of a Jay Z. I do want to get to a greatness level. But if this tree stops there and splinters off somewhere else, I'm more I'm more than happy going in another direction. Like this is not my Life, sweat, and blood dream from cradle to grave. You know what I'm saying? Right. My end goal is to support my family and raise my son to be a better man than I was. So whatever avenue that it is, that's the one I'm gonna take. You mentioned um, you, you mentioned the BMAs and um, you you pulled up and I was I was unaware that that you. Um, <laughs> I had to see some of the social media stuff and I saw that you uh, you know pulled up in a limo. What um, did you, did you ride through the hood with the limo? Of course, we posted up Park Heights. Okay, okay. <laughs> we posted up right on the corner, thirty six hundred, and I mean everybody out there taking pictures, having a good time, hopped in the limo, and cruise on over. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, I, that was I'm sure an experience, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of people, especially some of the you know the young kids, something that they don't see all the time, and they'll probably remember. Yeah, I took my my day one dude with me, man. Like he out there in the streets, real heavy, and I like he he younger than me. And, like, I remember when I was in the streets and he was a kid. You know what I mean? So, like, I want to show him that it's more than just Park Heights. You feel me? Like, it's cool to rap where you're from and love where you're from, but you don't got to stay where you're from. You feel me? Yeah, definitely. Like, I tell you now, I live in the burbs. Every time I come home, though, like, I stop through, shake everybody's hand, sit on a block for an hour or two just talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Police come through. They speak to me and everything. Oh, my. Um, are you, do you follow politics at all? Mm, my old lady do So when she talk about it I listen But well, to me Like That's a whole nother thing I'm kind of a A, a, a newborn conspiracy theorist <laughs> So I don't really Talk too much about stuff like that But I mean We could give it a go But uh It was simple Simple question Um With the Republicans Taking over And uh This 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 town being one That uh We're going to have A Republican Governor Governor uh, now we've had those before. What do you, do you have any feelings about that? Is that going to change your life any, or you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I feel like no matter how the elections go, you still in, you still in control of your life. Like little minor things may change, 
Like you might lose a hundred dollars a paycheck or eighty dollars a paycheck, but it ain't gonna ruin your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, trying to keep my conspiracy out the conversation. <laughs> no, I don't think that that particularly just because of a vote is going to change. But Ebola is real, and there's some shit going on. So I mean, y'all can take it how y'all want, but it's the GOP right now. So shit about to change. So I take that I I read into that to say that you yeah. think that Ebola is man made. Fuck yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, excuse me, my bad. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's definitely man made. That's a studio baby. Don't <laughs> <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> man, it's def it's definitely a man made, man. I don't care what nobody say. It ain't no way you're gonna bring that all the way from Africa over. We made too many movies about outbreaks, yo, for you to do some dumb stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Take your equipment over there. You can take howitzers over there. You can take scud missiles, tow missiles, all that stuff over to Africa and Iraq or wherever you want to go to blow something up. But you can't take a quarantine station over there and fix somebody over there? That don't even make sense to me, Dad. Mm-hmm. And then it broke containment. Yo, we got to move you what? Outbreak, 28 days later, walking dead. Everything breaks containment. they microorganisms. You can't control that. So why would you even fly them here in the first place? And where the conspiracy come in for me is the first two patients that he brought back, the white man and the white lady, right? Right. They got videos of the white man, interviews of the white man, all this stuff, because they both cured, right? Right. If you look at the white lady, they ain't got no interviews, no video footage, just still pictures. But they interview her mother, her father, her sons, and everybody else. So what's really going on? Why are you hiding her so much? You feel me? I mean, maybe she didn't want to talk. Nah, hell no. Nah. Her pictures <laughs> all over the news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... it's um. I was reading some stuff that I thought was interesting that there are a hundred people in Maryland, people right? In and 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 that they have that they're watching. They don't talk about these people though because they don't want people to get too. They don't want, they don't want to get too crazy. Right. Yeah, um, I, I think that I don't know whether it was man made or not, but I do know the way that they've handled it has been poor. very piss poor, like. Some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. Like for instance, my lady was supposed to went to Cleveland um, with her best friend. Oh my! Because she's getting married and they're going to bridal dress shop because one of their friends live in Cleveland. I said, "Bitch, look, as tough as I want to be, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait twenty one days before you go over there." <laughs> the chick went there and went dress shopping. Oh, she's already been there. Yeah. The, the um the little um the lady who was down um Bethesda. Oh, she knows her? Did they, no. The, oh. She went to Cleveland. Oh, the, went to that she, same place. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. Cleveland, right. bridal dress shopping. So right, same you know thing. So you yeah. go to Cleveland and go bridal dress. No, 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 baby. It's not happening. Yeah. I love my baby too much for that. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's extra. You 21 days. <laughs> yeah, you got to wait, wait 21 days. Maybe try to go on the 14th day. I said, that's not enough, that. <laughs> All right, so um, let's take a quick break and let's come back and talk some more with Nucky Johnson. Is that is we good with that? All right, that's your show. I'm just sweet tea. That's fine. All right, all right. So let's take a break. We'll come back. Radio on Stay tuned.